Hey, and welcome guys. As you can see here today, we have a ship from Lost in Space. This is the AMT Ertl kit uh, released, I'm not sure, quite a while back. See if I can find a copyright date or something on it. Um, it says 1998 Productions. So I'm not sure, I'm guessing when the model was released. Anyway, um, so just a very basic model. As you can see, I got some parts off to the side. I've already opened up and started looking at it. Uh, on the cover of the box, you have um, one of the actual models put together with a um, somewhat accurate paint job, um, but not the greatest. So I do want to light this kit. So let's just take a look at what we got here. Now, I did start off by washing this. I'm starting to get back in it, especially these older kits. I think they developed kind of a, because of the plastic, they develop a film when they sit for years and years. And so it's always good practice to wash these in dish soap and clean, clean them off to make sure you don't have any problems later on with your paint peeling off. So anyway, this is the bottom of the ship. Um, basically you got uh, top and bottom of the main hull with some other parts and side pieces that go in it. Um, it's pretty nicely detailed as you can see here. It's a lot of, a lot of line detail. This is all, uh, it's not raised, it's all inset detail, panel lines and stuff. So pretty nice. Um, I don't know exactly how accurate it is. I, I have tried to watch some clips of the old movie. It's hard to find some without watching the actual movie and uh, looking at it. So it looks like a good representation. Uh, now, in the clips that I did see, there's a, there are quite a few like little lights going on beside the engine lights. And... Sorry, I should have been more prepared as I started the video. Uh, you can see here where we have the sides of the ship and there's some uh, like exterior pieces. I think that goes with this one. Um, nope, I think it goes like that. Uh, that kind of stand out away. And so a lot of pieces like that. And here you have the engine cluster. Now this is the one part, it's just weird to me. You have a ton of engine nozzles and then inside the engine nozzles are more nozzles so uh, I don't know what they're re really trying to go with that uh, as you can see I've already started drilling out some of them uh, not all of them have been drilled out you have like these three main ones uh, you have uh, some four smaller ones or medium sized ones and you have one two three four five six and you have ten of these really small ones and if you look it's hard to see inside those are like five different um, spaces for, I guess, engine nozzles. Um, I still have some uh, drilling out to do of the bigger engine nozzles, I guess. Now on these smaller ones, they're so small that I think I'm not gonna worry about trying to drill out each individual one. And I'll probably just make it a big hole um, just for the whole nozzle. Uh, it's just kind of weird. I don't really like that design. Um, I get they're going like super detailed, but I mean, there comes a point where you're, you're getting kind of overboard on that. I think this is actually the top of it. Um, so anyway, I'll be cutting that out. I did research it. It looks like uh, they admit, you know, it's kind of a bright white light with maybe a hint of blue. So I'll probably just do some white lighting behind it. I'll probably have to build something around here to contain the light so it doesn't bleed out. Because I think, and I usually don't build this way, but I think, I'm, because of the way the model goes together, I think I'm going to go ahead and paint the sections like separately and then glue them all together. So I'll have to kind of address uh, a lot of the uh, light, you know, or make it to where I'm using fiber optics um, or address what could leak out from the engines. Now, as far as the tops, and it shouldn't have much seam work because there's only this small section where it comes together. The rest is going to be uh, these insert parts. You don't have to worry about the seam lines there. So uh, I still want to paint it, but I'll probably have to go back over that uh, seam line there once that's all glued together and repaint all that. But it's just a small section. And I think overall I can get a better paint job. It does have quite a bit going on with the paint job. Uh, there's this long blue... Um, line is kind of curves and stuff. You do get some decals to get some of these finer. You see on here is some fine white lines on here. 
and you do get some decals to cover that. And decals are pretty good. There's a little bit of yelling. Um, I'll just have to trim it out. Um, I've heard of people putting it in the window cell and letting the sun bleach it out, but I find if I just trim it out, usually that's not much of an issue. So you do get some decals. It looks like you have, I think this is on the other side of the ship that you can't see. Uh, they give you some blue. I don't know. You know that's pretty long swipe. I don't know if I'll use that because I, uh, either that or I'll have to try to match that pink color. And I don't know if I want to get that pink color because um, the box art, it looks like a more of a lightish blue where when I kind of took some screenshots, I, I found pictures, I believe, of the studio model and it's uh, kind of more gray blue color. So I'll probably uh, just mask that off and paint that off. We'll have kind of probably an off white for the main body. Looks like the sides are probably a grayish color. Now for the bottom of the Jupiter 2 here, we have this clear part and it's closed off and this uh, just kind of goes in here. I do want to like that. Uh, in the movie, I can tell that there are some lights in there, but I don't, I couldn't really tell if it like circles around like the original TV show did. Uh, but that's what I'm going to be doing. I actually found a, uh, and I bought this kit like probably two years ago. And when I did, I went ahead and researched and I found this light tracer kit. These are like 10 millimeter LEDs attached to a board. And plug it up to a nine volt source and you have a button. And you can do different effects where it spins around. And it's, uh, I think it's a good size. So it should make a good effect for the bottom of our ship. So I'll have to cut that out and figure out how I'm going to attach all that and light block it and stuff. Uh, we do have a cockpit area that will go in the front section of the ship. Not very detailed and kind of bouncing around where that's should I just, I don't even know if I want to show it. I may just uh, darken in the window and have that be black, but if I do, I might need to try to scratch belt some detail in there and do some kind of lighting. I think it's something like this that it goes. It's kind of strange. So anyway, um, a lot of figuring out uh, to do this, but um, that's what we're looking at as far as the pieces we have to deal with. There are some smaller detail pieces we'll have to add on, but that's kind of the gist of the model. So that being said, let's get started. All right, well, here's my progress so far. As you can see on the bottom section here, I have removed uh, that center part and cut it out. Here's uh, the part that was left in between. Um, I started drilling out holes, but that was just going to take forever. So I ended up getting a cutting wheel on my Dremel. As you can see here, just kind of cutting away through that. I then took a um, little drum sander attachment for my Dremel and then sanded around the rest to kind of clean up that hole. And it's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. Um, our little clear piece will come all the way to around here, so no one's really going to see that. Just want to make it kind of uniform, clean that out. And um, so I've also attached a bolt here. Uh, now I'm going to use one of these monitor mounts um, to uh, be the stand for my model. Now the hole supplied for the kit stand uh, fits this kind of nicely and goes up in there and I just had to find a bolt the right size. I put some two-part epoxy on there that's on there nice and strong so I can uh, easily mount that and it'll be a nice strong connection for that. So that's the work done on the bottom part. Um, getting that cleaned up and opened up for our clear part. The lighting is going to go there and also for our stand that we're going to use. Now on the top section, I'll, if you can quite tell, you can tell it's a bit shinier. I have went ahead and applied a coat, a base coat of paint on this. I first primed over this with a gray primer and just using this bare toasty gray uh, gloss paint um, to apply a coat. Now with these gloss paints, you do not need to let them cure for probably a couple of days, maybe even longer, just to be safe before you start doing too much handling. This has only been dry for probably three or four hours now, so I'm trying, still not trying to touch it. Uh, may still leave a fingerprint or two on it. So I'll let that dry for uh, at least a couple of days before I start trying to mask it off. I'm not too worried about uh, the color. I think is pretty good. It's not. A, it's an off-white color. It's not a stark white. So. Um, 
looking at photos of the uh, studio model, they're actually, um, some of it's quite weathered. Um, the ship crashes and go th goes through several explosions, things of that nature. Uh, and some of the pictures are quite weathered. I don't know if I'm going to do it in that weathered, but uh, this is just a base coat. Uh, we have some blue striping, some decals, uh, some detail paintings going to go on it. So all that's still left to be done. And as you can see here, here's our engine section that's been opened up and a lot of clearing out all these holes, drilling those out. I painted it with a flat black and then uh, did some uh, this uh, hand painting on the engine nozzles and dry brushing with the same color. And that was a uh, kind of a strange mix of this uh, antique copper by Pocart and a little bit of this aluminum. They're both acrylic paints, so they uh, mix well. And I mixed it with a little bit of water and uh, that mixed up pretty well and brushed on uh, actually pretty nicely. And so, and I like that kind of color we have going on there. Uh, just looking at photos of the studio model, it was kind of this similar to this color. Um, it's heavily suited, I guess you'd say. So I still have some weathering to do. I did the same thing on both of the side pieces, uh, flat coat, uh, flat black coat as a base coat and then dry brushing and may do a little bit more detail painting around here. I have opened up a few holes uh, for some fiber optics. And now as far as our clear part for our bottom section, that has been painted. Um, and uh, I just painted with these regular paints and I started off with, again, this copper color. I thinned this down with water and a little bit of alcohol, strained it and airbrushed it on. I first applied a matte clear coat uh, so that the, this paint would have something uh, to stick onto and uh, did a clear uh, matte coat on both sides. Then I airbrushed this on, this color, and then went back for a little dry brushing uh, with some of this model color brass. So we have kind of a two-tone color going on there. I then painted the inside of this a dark gray and again, dry brush some of this uh, brass color for to bring out the details. And again, this is going to be on the bottom. Uh, light will trans uh, transfer around um, through that. It's still pretty clear. It's in no way you can actually see through it. So there'll be no issues with the light being seen through that. I have taken a piece, uh, just a uh, random piece I found in my kit box to cover on here. And this is where our lighting element will go. I cut it down the size to fit the diameter of this lighting piece. So I'll be able to attach that right in this section and then run our wires. And of course, uh, that will go in here. So I did pick out a um, lighting sequence. Uh, you can get through the different effects, but you also have this um, little screw part here that will speed up and down the particular effect that you have going on. Uh, the one I have on is kind of a two, two light circ circulating. And I like that effect. For me, that's, that's a nice look to it. And so I'm pretty happy with that. I, in the process of this painting up all the parts, I'm going to be painting everything separately and attaching it. I now have to figure out the how I'm going to light these engines. Obviously, this will sit right in here, like that. And we'll have to add some lights in there, and I'll need to light and block it. Um, I'll probably make some kind of enclosure for this engine. So. Once everything gets uh, painted and dried, I will work on getting the lights in here, uh, different fiber optics. Now I had made a decision to not do a bridge section as far as um, the window is very thin. You can barely see in it. And then that this just doesn't look good. It's just nothing to look at inside there. To me, it's not really worth it. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is just paint the inside of the clear piece black and just focus on having the outside uh, look good and have lighting effects on the outside. Uh, from the movie scenes I watch, you really can't see inside that well anyway. So with this being that, I just also feel like the time of 
trying to make that look better. And even if I spend a lot of time, I just don't know how, mu how much is worth it. So, you know, as in the case of most projects, kind of weigh out the uh, time to benefit uh, of something I'm going to be doing. If something doesn't have uh, a lot of benefit, but it's going to take a lot of time, then I may look for another option. So that's the case here. I just don't think, I think it would take a lot of time to not get much benefit in this model. So I'd rather just focus on making the outside uh, giving a good paint job, having some cool lighting effects, and having a nice uh, display uh, just based off that. So from there, uh, we'll just keep moving forward. All right, as you can see here, I've got a lot of the uh, painting on the top section done, or at least the hardest parts. Um, I had to mask off this, these two large stripes that go on either side of the ship and just use some reference uh, pictures and also the instruction manual. Um, this one's a little off from what it says, but I'm pretty happy how that came out. This one's pretty close to the way I think it's supposed to be on the studio model. Uh, there are some decals that go on there, some white striping. Um, uh, overall, I think that came out pretty good. Uh, once I had my base coat on, I did put over a clear coat over that, and for the blue, it was kind of a mixture. I wanted to have a like a light blue-gray, so I mixed some of this acrylic paints, a um, little bit of this blue from uh, U.S. Art Supply, a little bit of aggressor gray, and a little bit of uh, USAF light gray, kind of mixed those all together. Uh, actually, the first mixture was a little bit darker, and then I mixed a little bit more a light gray into it and sprayed it. And there's a little bit of color, color modulation going on because I used the light gray. I didn't try to cover 100% of it. Um, doesn't show too well in the video, but there is a little bit of color modulation. And then all these parts here to go on this uh, other section. I'm not sure what this section in. Uh, probably some kind of reactor, I would guess. Anyway, these... Uh, Parts right here uh, was a mixture of some uh, steel and brass. Uh, kind of give it that um, brass look, but not so stark looking on that. And uh, hand painted all that. Hand painted all the uh, colors in here with uh, black gray. And I still need to do a little bit of dry brushing in there. I also did some panel line, to me is panel line black accent color in there too. And as you can see, I have it's all the bridge section along with its uh, window. Now I originally thought about lighting it and then I thought about painting the inside black. I may just leave that clear. Um, so let's put this section in here and then I still may put some kind of light in there. I don't know because it looks pretty dark anyway if I do it like that. So I don't think I'll need to paint it black uh, but I will need to paint this up. Uh, this was a little tricky. The window was uh, a little bit of a difficult fit. I had to kind of super glue just the very corners in there. It's actually still a little wet where I put in some white glue to help secure the whole thing. Uh, but that's now glued into place. And I'm uh, pretty happy with how that came out. There's some still decals and some other painting to do. And then this section needs to be painted right here. And a few other details uh, to put on. So I just wanted to show you that before I move any further. All right, as you can see here, we have the bottom of our ship here, have the Jupiter 2, and I'm just kind of show you the lighting. I'm getting close to sealing the model in. Uh, you can see I've attached the sides and the engine cluster, I guess you would say, to the bottom of the ship, and it's glued in there, and I have the... Uh, uh, mostly of super glue, but I also took some hot glue to kind of light block around these uh, seams. It was still pretty good, as you can see here, but just want to make sure no light leaked out. Now for the engines, I have uh, some strip lighting here. This is our white five millimeter LED strip lights. Uh, there's a group of six of them attached. I just used some uh, sprue uh, glued into the bottom of the ship and secured with another strip there so it's good and strong. And then uh, stuck that on there, put a little hot glue to make sure it doesn't come off, and that will light all of our engines. And you can see here we have our spinning effect. Uh, now I took some cardstock. This is actually part of the uh, model box that the model came in. 
can see here, the Jupiter 2, and cut a section out of that so I can light block. I'm going to put a cover over this so no light's escaping since that's going to be spinning around. I don't want light leaks coming where you just kind of flashing, taking away from uh, the model. So just hot glue that into place. It's nice and secure. I'll take another piece of cardstock and close it up over. I'm also going to run it up over just the very lip of this so we don't have any of this light kind of coming up through. And uh, I may push that all the way into the engine section. Something like that is kind of my plan. plan. And then I'll glue it there and then that will uh, keep all of our light inside. There's a few more LEDs I need to attach. I'm going to have some fiber optics coming out of each side. So I'll have a couple little uh, running lights coming out of there. And also on the front end, there's uh, some clear pieces that attach this very front end here and here. And what I'm going to do, I'm still going to use those clear pieces, but I'm going to mount a couple of three millimeter LEDs right behind it. And those will illuminate those clear pieces. But for now, I still have to close this off and there's going to be some work uh, getting this glued together and uh, to where it looks good. And so uh, what I'll do is just have those lights there. And then at the very end, I'll uh, attach those clear pieces. I believe this is them right there. And they just kind of plug in there. Uh, but the light should illuminate those nice and brightly. So I have to attach those. So that will be uh, the lighting. So we'll have two more LEDs and then one more uh, attached somewhere here with fiber optics running to the uh, sides of the ship here. As you can see here, I now have most of the top pretty good put together and secured. I have my cockpit, which will be illuminated by a single light. Um, it's a simple effect, but I think it'll turn out pretty good. I've already looked at it. Uh, again, there's not a whole lot of room to look in there. I simply painted the interior with a um, spray can of aluminum paint. And the way this light, it lights the center console there and you get some nice shadows and actually looks pretty good. Really simple. Uh, didn't take a lot of work, but it, 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 it lights enough in there to where you kind of can see the chairs and just from the way the light's bouncing around. I thought it actually looked pretty good, so no, I didn't feel like there was any need to try to do anything more on that. Um, I do have some fiber op. I need to run a light. I have some holes drilled in for some random fiber optics, so we'll have a few running lights on this top section here. Uh, of course, we still have to put the decals, but otherwise, uh, I think that's looking pretty good. I, I super glued that part in and then with some two-part epoxy to make sure that none of that comes out. Uh, same on this part right here. So. Uh, that's what's next. I'm going to have to drill a hole for our power wire to come out and then we'll attach the rest of our LEDs, fiber optics, and then it'll be a little bit tricky getting this closed in. Um, there's a lot of little tabs. It's not the greatest fit, so I expect some work to be done to get that closed in. And then once we have that in, it's just a matter of putting in the little side pieces that go in place attaching decals. Um, I may do a little bit of light weathering and we'll be close to getting done. But first things first, I'm going to get the lights attached, all my wiring, and get closed up and we'll take a look at it once I get that done. All right, as you can see here, I have my ship all sealed up and I also have some of my decals put on or most of my decals put on. Um, it was quite a chore to get this to uh, sandwich in between those parts. Um, you know, I had to glue down uh, some of the parts and then kind of work my way back to get it all uh, sealed. But I did get it sealed pretty good. There is a um, kind of a light leak in, up under here. I'm still trying to figure out if I'm going to try to address that. It's not too noticeable. You have to kind of look up under it to see it. Um, you can see the bottom here. And, and this is the uh, uh, monitor mount I'm using for the display stand. And that will go on a... Uh, base here. I made out wood and I'll have my battery pack on the bottom of that. And that will go there. I've been doing that for the last several models. Um, decals were okay. As you can see, there's a little bit of graying in them, um, but really not too bad. It kind of offsets the panel. I believe those are when they kind of get the ship goes into like a hyperspace kind of thing that these kind of elevate upwards. And I think that's why they're they kind of look like that. So uh, I did, there was a big seam line. I did fill that in and um, sand that down. 
uh, to get rid of the seam line that came across the front. Didn't worry too much about this big one right here with all those serrations. I just decided to leave that as a gap. I still have to enter in, see if I can get this into focus. Uh, I still have to put in the clear parts here for the headlights. Uh, but otherwise, I think it's uh, coming together looking pretty good. And uh, now from what's left here, and there's quite a few of these uh, side pieces. Um, most of them are painted up. Uh, they still have a gloss coat. I obviously I'll have to put a flat coat. But these will go along here, and there's several smaller ones that go into place. So I'll have to attach all those. And then from there, I'll do some weathering. I think there's a few more little decals I have to put on and we'll be done. So when I come back, we will look at the finished Jupiter 2. All right, well, here's my finished AMT Ertl uh, Lost in Space movie version of the Jupiter 2. And I just finished up by attaching uh, all these little side panels and they went on pretty easy. There's some little standoffs and little holes, just a little bit of super glue and put those in there. So that wasn't too difficult. And I had to do that on both sides. And of course we, uh, what else I did? I did a little bit of weathering once I got it all done, a little bit of detail painting here and there. I just used some dry pastels just to darken up uh, a few spaces, mostly around kind of the edges of the ship to kind of uh, give it some false shadows and uh, just bring out the detail. And so overall, it was a pretty fun build. Lots of space for lighting. We'll turn those on just a second. Um, I think it's a really unique ship. It's, a, it's definitely a cool design. It has a, a strange paint job, but it kind of works um, very different. Um, I don't know if fans of the original TV show care for this kind of uh, oval teardrop shape with the offset uh, bridge section, but uh, it is pretty nice. Now, like, judging by the little seats inside, I say we're somewhere in the 144 scale, perhaps a little bit smaller than that, to give you an idea of the size of it. Um, it's uh, about, say, 14 inches long or so, just guessing. So anyway, I'm gonna turn on the uh, lights here and we have the bridge section and I think that turned out pretty well. Originally I was thinking about uh, darkening that in, but I just have a single light kind of in the middle. There's like a um, command center or a set of command table back here and it has a glowing top and that's where I put that one light. And of course I have the headlights now. I do have a little bit of light bleed coming through right here, uh, just from those two LEDs that I put in there. Uh, not much I could do about that. Um, and so I'm not going to worry about it. It does just kind of look like the lights is kind of shining off of it. So it's not that big of a deal for me. Uh, I have some lights on the uh, top of the ship here. You can see where our fiber optics are coming in. And then also on the side, I you know, have a couple of fiber optics running in to decide to give it this a little bit more life. A uh, quick look at the base. It's being powered by six double A's, so we have nine volts running in to there. And I'll show you the bottom more in just a second. And I think the engine section came up pretty good. Perhaps it could have been a tad bit brighter, but overall, I think it looks pretty good. It's not overwhelming. It's not blinding to look at. And it shows all the detail of the mini uh, engine nozzles we have. And so let's take a look at the reactor going on there. Very happy of how that came out. Now I can change the angle of all this so you can get a better look. And so um, I think that's kind of the highlight of the model is that uh, LED chaser light working there to kind of simulate the uh, fusion drive, I believe it is, of the Jupiter 2. And the model will come off its stand. It's just screwed into place. And then I have a connecting line right here that I can unplug. So if I will, do want to travel with it or if I do eventually sell it, um, and I can be able to remove that and box it up separately than the display stand so there's not so much stress. So it was a fun build. Hope you've enjoyed the uh, project. Until next time, everybody have a good one.